Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we all agree that our immigration system is broken and it needs to be fixed. I support fundamental immigration reform, and I'm encouraged that both houses of Congress are willing to consider this this year. I believe we have an opportunity to make progress where there's broad consensus on a number of necessary and long overdue reforms. But overhauling our entire immigration system isn't going to be simple, and it won't happen overnight. This is because we don't face just one big immigration problem. Our immigration system is a complex puzzle with dozens of interconnected parts and pieces. And some reforms must be completed before others can even really begin. Indeed, certain preliminary measures are necessary prerequisites for other subsequent reforms. For example, we simply won't understand how best to address the problem of our constantly shifting illegal immigration population until our borders are actually secure and we know who has overstayed their visas. That's why it's somewhat futile to make decisions about later stages before the essential foundations are even in place. Trying to solve every problem all at once is the surest way to avoid fixing any of them very well. Good policy doesn't flow from massive bills that seek to resolve every conceivable issue in a single sweeping piece of legislation. We're in the immigration mess that we face today because a single comprehensive bill in 1986 didn't come close to fixing all of our problems 27 years ago. Despite good intentions, in many ways that bill may have made things worse and the American people deserve better. Serious efforts at lasting immigration reform will have to be considered and implemented in stages over the course of years. That's why I favor a sensible incremental approach. Republicans and Democrats share much common ground on the most immediate issues. We're largely in agreement on essential elements like border security, employment verification, visa reform, guest worker programs, and high-skilled immigration. And we could enact significant reforms in each of these critical areas immediately. Such concrete incremental progress shouldn't be sacrificed to demands that we try to address every challenge at once or that we seek to resolve the most intractable problems first. <laughs> we ought not hijack meaningful progress on common sense preliminary measures by linking them to subsequent more contentious ones. I appreciate the efforts of my colleagues who have worked hard to develop the comprehensive proposal we begin to mark up today. But I believe success in actually achieving the goals identified in this legislation must come through a series of incremental reforms that first ensure the foundational pieces like border security and an effective entry exit system are implemented properly. The long-standing disconnect between immigration policy and enforcement has created deep distrust that the federal government will or even can keep its promises. For decades, Congress has legislated border and legal immigration enforcement policies only to have administrations of both parties fail later to implement them. Many conservatives, like me, are eager to enact fundamental immigration reform so long as those reforms begin with a secure border and a renewed commitment to enforce our immigration laws. But this bill doesn't do quite enough to establish that foundation. Instead, it gives broad discretion to the, Homeland, uh, to the uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, to make unreviewable determinations about easily manipulated security goals. According to one tally, the bill includes 400 different waivers, exceptions, and exemptions the administration can use to relax enforcement measures without any oversight or input from Congress. As written, the bill's border security triggers may be illusory, yet the legislation provides for legalization and a path to citizenship prior to any actual demonstrable success in securing the border. This is precisely why such comprehensive immigration reform is so controversial. It rejects step-by-step -step reforms and refuses to allow the American people an opportunity to assess and approve the initial fixes before further reforms proceed. I look forward to this process and to making this legislation. Thank you very much.